Hey guys, this is Mitigations, and welcome to my a very special little video. Uh, basically, this is just getting off my chest. I thought since it's Halloween, it'd be a nice little treat for you guys. Um, especially with some of my subscribers who uh, some of my friends really like it when I do this type of video, especially when regarding this topic. And I've done videos about this before. One of my first ever rant videos is on this, and I thought, well, all right. Since I'm talking about, since I did review a poltergeist, why don't I uh, basically put the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, of my opinions on the bullshit piece of shit DVD 25th anniversary DVD from Warner Brothers, which was one of the first times I remember ever being extremely disappointed. Like I remember being like super psyched, super happy that Poltergeist was since a movie. It's like the first time I ever really remember being really excited for a DVD release. And then, because I found out that, you know, Poltergeist was going to get a two-disc special edition, I was checking it out online, through Poltergeist forum, fan forums and stuff, and Warner Brothers announced it, there's going to be a two-disc special edition, there's going to be loads of features, it was big fanfare, and then, you know, I was really excited, I saved up money, and I went in, I was going to go buy it, found out when it was coming out and then you know I actually did review I really actually I didn't really keep up with the news after I heard the two days because I didn't think they were gonna cancel it I didn't think they were gonna do what they eventually ended up doing which is release a bullshit 25th anniversary edition with with no feed new features other than a documentary that uses well not really a documentary uh, other than a little sort of, you know, yeah, it kind of is. Documentary about real life poltergeists with footage from the film. And that's no commentary, no better picture quality, but, you know, hey, I, I thought it was going to be a true special edition. One that all, you know, not only me, but big fans of the film were, were looking forward to. But, nope, that's not what happened. Warner Brothers gave us all the shaft and the middle finger and told us to go stick our thumbs up our asses and, you know, be fine with it, basically, with this bullshit release. And as the years have passed, you know, when I eventually I found out the hard way about, you know, how crappy this DVD was because I saved up my money, like I said, and I went to the store and I was going to go buy it. And I picked it up and I had it in my hands. And then I flipped it over and I looked for the features, and I'm like, "Where, where is any? Where's the commentary? Where, where's the interviews of the cast and crew? What? There's not even an interview with Richard Edlund? Like nothing? Real life polar guys? I don't give a shit about that. That's not what I wanted. And then I just uh, put it back. I put the DVD back on the shelf and I walked out of the store pissed. I was like, "What the hell is this shit?" And then I, I mean. Even it, you know, not necessarily that, because, you know, when I was younger, like, I don't think I really was that much of a, you know, uh, I didn't swear like a sailor like I do nowadays, but really, I was pissed. I was pissed off. And then I went, you know, basically then I refused to buy a copy of that special edition from that day forward, and I still haven't bought a copy of that. I will refuse to buy that piece of shit special edition. I don't care how cheap it is. So... That's why I have the bare bones Warner Brothers release. That's in like you know the you know the cardboard case. Cause I'm not gonna fucking buy that ever bullshit. So anyway, so then or as the years went on, when I got more and more uh, acclimated to the internet and figuring out how to how it works and things like that, I just wanted to decide to do my own research. So I had to figure out okay, what's going on? Why does it not have a special edition? Like what is going on here? And the first little bit that I really recognized and figured out about why the kit might be the case is when I uh, read this book called The Greatest Sci-Fi Movies Never Made by David Hughes. And in it, there's a little uh, chapter that talks about a project that Spielberg was working on called Night Skies. And it was basically what eventually, it's basically like sort of like a, it's kind of sort of a sequel to Close Encounters, but with like, you know, uh, evil aliens. They, they crash into a farmhouse, and it's supposed to be a more, you know, a horror film, a bit more like a horror movie. Well, you know, I've done I've done videos on that before, and I'll probably do a video on Night Sky sometime, you know, in the near future as well, because that's, that's, a, that's a topic that pisses me off, too. That's when I really figured out about Spielberg, 
that there's a little a side to him that a lot of people don't see because he does a good job keeping it from the you know the general public and that's why I call him Steven Schmuck you can see why I call him Steven Schmuck in my review I call him Steven Schmuck because of this because of Night Skies and because the way he treated Rick Baker who worked on the effects for Night Skies he created some animatronics Spielberg liked them but then he decided while well, he's over filming Raiders, he decided, well, Nice Guys is too depressing and dark. And thanks to an idea from Kathleen Kennedy, you know, basically told him he decided he was going to do something more lighter and ended up doing E.T. So then after he figured out he was going to do E.T. instead of Night Skies, which is not only, you know, basically telling Rick Baker to go fuck himself, but also telling the, the studio that was financing Night Skies from Spielberg, Columbia Pictures, to go suck it. So anyway, what happens is. He tries to ask Rick Baker if he wants to work on E.T., and Rick Baker says, tells the Steven Spielberg, he says, I'm sorry, I can't, I got an obligation to the American World from London. And Spielberg flips out, you know, yells at him, berates him, you know, tells him he doesn't know, you know, what is, he basically insults him. And he takes all of the footage, you know, all the footage of the test footage of the effects work that Baker did for Night Skies. And he also not only takes all of that, but he also takes the preliminary work he was he uh, did for America Royal from London and storms out of the out of uh, Baker's uh, offices or Baker's uh, you know base of operations, so to speak. And then to make matters worse, in in a few little uh, article in a couple of newspapers, you know, uh, before ET's release. Or after it, they, t they say that the thousands of dollars are spent on, you know, failed prototypes for ET models. And you also find out that from Rick Baker himself that Carl Rombaldi kind of used some of his uh, artwork and designs for some of the aliens in Night Skies for ET. So that's a whole, that's, that's a can of worms. And that's what I'm saying is when I read that, whether or not it's true or not, but I kind of, I kind of do side with it because I do honestly believe in Rick Baker. You know, I don't. I think I he's a very down to earth guy. I don't think he would lie. And then, basically, when I find out, you know, basically the reason why this connects to Poltergeist is because the same chapter then talks about how uh, Night Skies evolved into Poltergeist. And then it talks a little about about maybe Toby Hooper, how how possibility that Toby Hooper came up with the idea of Poltergeist because he found a uh, a uh, Poltergeist book in an office that he moved into, and. Um, then, then Spielberg says it's based on his childhood fears, and then you, then I did some more research, and I found out all this sort of back and forth sort of thing, even from actors, and who worked on the film, like Zelda Rubenstein, saying that Steven was more hands-on. Steven was the one directing the scenes that she was in. So then it gets really, really, you know, complex, so to speak. Like who directed, you know, Poltergeist? Was it Toby Hooper? Or was it Steven Spielberg? Hearing rumors that Toby Hooper was smoking pot and wasn't on the set. Steven Spielberg was interviewed about it. He said that Toby isn't the type of hands-on type guy. So then you have all this type of information, and it leads you to believe that okay, all right, maybe this is the reason why there's no special edition. And then I did some more research, and I found out that Spielberg actually denied Warner Brothers the rights to use behind the scenes footage for documentaries for the 25th anniversary edition and then that just sparked a red flag in my head and then after already reading you know the article reading the not real article but reading the chapter in uh, the greatest sci-fi movies never made then I was I was I just it started to click and I was like wow Steven Spielberg you are a fucking asshole. I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. I, it's the reason why we don't have a uh, Poltergeist special edition. Fans of Poltergeist out there, it's Spielberg's fault. Nobody's fault except his own. Seriously, because he's denying the rights for Warner Brothers to use footage to do anything. He'll bring in his lawyers if they try to do any kind of behind-the-scenes footage. Uh, and I also heard they tried to ask Toby Hooper for interviews. He declined, which I, I can totally understand. Because Hooper ended up suing Spielberg for credit for Poltergeist. So, you know, and the, and the Screen Guild, you know, Actors Guild, the, the Screen Actors Guild, the SAG, uh, the DGA, the Directors uh, Guild of America, they did a little investigation on Poltergeist and after it came out, and they didn't find any inf information that basically denoted that they needed to give Spielberg a co-director credit. So, so the, you, you hear that kind of stuff, and you're like, okay, what's going on here? And then I did some more recent re 
research recently, actually just a couple days ago when I was getting ready to review the movie, and I found this article, which is from this fantastic website, Poltergeist 3, you know, Poltergeist, uh, I think it's like Poltergeist3.com, Poltergeist, www.poltergeist.poltergeist, what is it, like 1234.com or whatever, it, it, the Poltergeist the fan site, it's an excellent site, it has so much information, it's a wealth of information, it's for any Poltergeist fan out there, it's an absolute gem, it's like one of the best fan sites on the internet in my opinion, it's got so much information, it's not only just on the first movie, but on all three films, it's really, really great, and so anyway, I want to give credit to this site because they found this uh, article that was in German and they asked for an uh, English version of it. And basically, here's, a, here's the article. I'm just going to read it for you. Three weeks ago it arrived in the USA, 25 years after its premiere of the film Poltergeist ran again in cinemas. The re-release served the promotion of a new DVD of the film, which has also been released in Germany. But the 25th anniversary special edition isn't very special. The reason is controversy, which persists since 1982 and involves the most well-known film director in the world, Steven Spielberg. Since this, this summer, the controversy is on again. On the web, fans were talking, especially at sites such as www.spielbergfilms.com, that is the website which the man himself lent a positive word to, saying that the reporting is, an ac is accurate and thorough. Poltergeist is one of the films which is discussed on the site as Spielberg's movies. The problem is only the fact that Spielberg did not lead direction here, but only served as producer. The credited director was Toby Hooper. The focus of Poltergeist is the Freeling family, who built their beautiful house on an old cemetery, immediately disturbed as spirits kidnapped the Freeling daughter into our, the other world. Of course, you know, parapsychology team advised to investigate. That the Poltergeist controversy to continue 25 years after its original release can be traced back to the studio, which now owns it, Warner Brothers. At the beginning of the year, it was announced that to celebrate the film's anniversary, there would be a two-disc set, which would likely include full making ofs, feature, uh, feature commentaries, memories of actors, uh, interview with crew members, etc. And over the summer, many were excited and wanted to to find out exactly what it would contain. People like me. That's when I first heard about the special edition was when they made that announcement online. Finally, the announcement was made. Besides the remastered film, there was, there was only to be a two-part documentary about real-life ghost hunters. See how much of a fucking letdown that is? Other, you know, otherwise nothing else is on the special edition. The special edition is not very special. Fact is, this 20, Poltergeist 25th Anniversary Edition stinks. Flashback, that's being kind. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give you the uncensored version. Uh, the fact is, the Poltergeist 25th Anniversary Special Edition fucking sucks. Flashback, at the beginning of the 1980s, Steven Spielberg had finished Raiders of the Lost Ark and extremely successfully confronted Harrison Ford with a horde of ghosts. But now Spielberg had a problem. Besides the film E.T., he had another project in the pipeline, eventually to be called Poltergeist. According to the U.S. Trade Union rules, DGA, you know, that's basically he couldn't direct it himself. So we can only direct one movie. So different sources describe the Poltergeist trick as follows. Hooper prepared the scenes, then Spielberg arrived on the set and gave the scenes his final touch. After the shooting, the, re the respective scenes started. Authentic is also the his this history. Hooper cast a certain actor in one of the roles. Spielberg replaced him with another. Spielberg took over the production completely. The producer as a director and the director as an assistant. Since the double DVD was put on ice, rumors abound. Poltergeist fans believe the reason for poor extras is the old Who Directed Poltergeist controversy. Uh, on www.spielbergfilms.com, an alleged crew member posted for weeks and, and shined with amazing detailed knowledge. Well, I agree with a lot of the other fans. It's fucking Spielberg's fault. So he's, he, he, you know, if he did direct it, then open up and admit it. Don't deny the fans of this movie the special edition and features the movie deserves just because you're being a schmuck. I'm sorry. It's fucking bullshit. There's no reason for this. You know, you're being childish. You're being immature. And it sounds like you need a spanking, Stevie. From the both of us. From me and my friends and everyone else who is a fan of this movie. He needs to spank your ass, you spoiled little petulant child.